I paid $1,200 for these six broken projectors. If I can fix them all and sell them on eBay, they would bring in about $4,000. So let's see if I can fix them and make some money or if I just wasted $1,200. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. And the first one we're gonna take a look at is an Optima HD28 HDR. This retails for $577. I should be able to sell this used for $350 on eBay. But first we gotta turn it on and see what's all wrong. Okay, and we have it all hooked up. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. Okay, we just got a flashing blue light on the... So for number one, it turns on and it will shine a light, but then it just turns off and kind of like resets itself. So you can see right here, we get a lamp warning light. So I don't know if that, I'm assuming that means maybe the lamp is bad, but let's take it apart and see what the lamp looks like and see if there's anything going on in there that we can fix or whether we just have to replace the lamp. Luckily, we do have another one just like this. So if we need to test it with the lamp out of the other one, we can do that. So let's get it apart though and see what it looks like on the inside. Now I wonder if they, I wonder if that screw is for this panel. Maybe the panel just comes up and you can get, wow, you can get right down to the lamp right there, I bet. That's awesome. Oh, hey, here we go. Look at that. There we go. It was super easy. Now with this one out, I'm gonna put the lamp in from the other projector that's the exact same model. And then let's see if we still get that same lamp error. So this is number two that we'll be working on in a minute here. Wow, and I can already see one of the problems with this one. All of this is from smoke. Then we can pull this whole lamp out, just like that. Okay, now let's put that lamp into number one and see what it does. So we can just set it right in here, like that. Tighten the screw down. And that's all you have to do to replace the lamp on these things. That's super easy and I'm impressed with the repairability so far. So we got this blue light flashing, which is fine. We just need to see if that stays blue and also whether the lamp light comes on or not. And that doesn't really show very well, but you can see that it is working right here. I mean, <laughs> it looks like a nice one. You can't really tell from this, but that is definitely working good. I'm just gonna leave this here for a little while and just see if it overheats or if it works fine. Ah, so we actually get the same problem. So this is not a lamp issue, unless number two also has a lamp problem. I don't think it does. I tested it a little bit before the video and it did stay on for a while. I don't, I don't remember how long I tested it, but I think the lamp in that one was good. So this is kind of making me wonder whether there's something else going on. In order to test this, let's put the lamp back in number two and then we'll plug in number two and see how long it'll stay on itself. That'll tell us whether the lamp is good or not. JLC PCB is one of the best places to get your custom PCBs manufactured. In fact, JLCPCB.com is your one-stop online platform for all things related to custom PCB manufacturing. Customers enjoy low cost, high quality, and fast SMT service. You can order your custom PCBs and track the manufacturing process in real time. JLC PCB uses hand soldering, reflow soldering, and wave soldering. Their SMT parts library includes over 200,000 in-stock components. You can build your personal parts library inventory and save the parts for now or in the future. You can even pre-order the parts you need so you can assure that they're there when you need them. Thousands of components are supported by JLC PCB and its reliable component partners like DigiKey and Mouser. With JLC PCB, you never have to worry about the quality of your boards because they use an x-ray inspection machine. With this inspection machine, they can check each solder joint, making sure that there isn't too much or too little, and they can even check under BGA components. With 16 years of PCB manufacturing experience, JLC PCB has a well-trained engineering and customer support team. This ensures that not only will you get the best product, you'll also get excellent customer service. You can go right to jlcpcb.com to check out their services. I'll put a link in the description that'll take you right there. Now let's get back to these projectors and out from number one that is very hot i mean i knew these things had lamps that were hot but that's pretty warm and back into number two the fan is definitely ramping up so i'm just gonna leave this one turned on for a little while and let's see if it'll stay on or if it'll turn off with the lamp warning light illuminated so number two has been on for three minutes with no issues with the output light or the lamp. The light is still off. 
So I think we definitely have a problem with number one. I'm not sure what it is, but I don't think it's the lamp. Okay, so back to number one. And so far we're just getting a blinking blue light on the power button. It's not actually starting up with any, any light coming out of it. So, no, oh, well, put the lamp back in then see what it does. Okay, so now it won't even start up at all or show any sort of anything other than it won't it won't output any light at all. It just shows these two lights right here, the power light blinks and then the lamp warning light. So we know that number one has a lamp warning light with the original light. We also know that it has a lamp warning light with a lamp that we know works for sure. So we got to figure out what's going on and why it doesn't like any lamp that we put in this thing. So there's a great YouTube channel called Fix It Frank and he goes through numerous projectors to fix them and that's where I found some of this information pretty helpful. And then down here is the power supply under the main board. I definitely think that could be an issue. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is remove the main board, look at the top and bottom of that, and then also get down to the power supply. But let's get this main board out first. And just looking at this main board, I don't see any obvious problems. No signs of any burn components. Well, let's get down to the power supply and remove that and inspect that board. This cable was either not connected or not connected well. So, I mean, even just a simple cable that's loose could cause this sort of issue. It looks like this cable goes right to this switch over here. And this switch shows when this door is pushed on. So that's definitely a possibility. So first things first, let's make sure there is absolutely no voltage left in this power supply. We got this very big capacitor over here, but we're showing zero volts. Also want to check over here, zero volts there, zero volts on the fuse. So this power supply is safe to work on. Let's see if we can find anything that looks suspicious. I'm not seeing any burned components, anything melted. I see no evidence of any problems. So here we have the known good battery from the working projector. And here we have the questionable one from the projector we're working on right now. Let's put the good one into this projector and see if it works. Okay, now we have the top cover on. We got the red light on the power button, which is normal. Let's see if it'll power on now. Oh, I hear something. It is putting out some light. That's good. Fan's coming on. Okay, great. Okay, there we go. Let's see how long this lasts. We might have fixed this one though. And it's been just over five minutes and we have a nice strong picture. So I think this one is officially fixed, but I want to know a little bit more about what's going on with that power supply. If you remember when I took it out, there was that one cable that seemed like it was not connected all the way. So I'm actually going to put the old power supply back in, make sure that cable's connected, and then try and start it up and see if it'll run like it is right now. And out with this power supply we know is good. And in with the power supply we're not sure about. This is the cable that seemed like it was not plugged in very well when I was pulling this out. So let's make sure that is plugged in all the way. Okay, and let's see if that single cable that was loose caused this thing to not work. Here we go. So we're getting just the blue light like it was doing before. We have some light. And after almost seven minutes, this projector is still working great. So I think this one was fixed simply by installing a cable all the way onto the power supply. That cable was just loose when I pulled it out. So number one is fixed, and it was a pretty easy fix overall, even though it was kind of complicated to find. This projector is worth about $350 on eBay. Let's move on to number two and see if we can fix that one. The nice thing about number two is it's already been taken apart since we had to remove the power supply. We need to get this smoke smell out as well as we can. So I'm gonna start by trying to get it out of here. And then we also need to get it out of the top case. I'm gonna start by using a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol and get as much of it off as I can that way. Okay, and I think that's about the perfect amount of cleaning. We got a lot of nastiness off the inside of this. There's a little bit left right here, but that is not coming off no matter how hard I scrub on it. So I think I'm gonna call this good. I think now that this case is cleaned, we can turn this one on and see if there's anything else wrong. 
Okay, we got a blue light, that's good. Let's see if it'll start up. No light so far, come on. There's the fan, but still no light. Oh, we have light, that's what we need. And coming up on six minutes here, still showing a picture. I'm gonna call number two fixed. That's another $350 that you can get used for on eBay. Let's move on to number three and see what's wrong with that one. And number three is a GT1080 HDR, retails for $800, sells for $550 used on eBay. So let's plug it in and see if it works. Okay, and we immediately get a red light on the power button, which I think is normal. Okay, we got some light. The fan just came on. Okay, and this one definitely works. I'm gonna leave it turned on for a few minutes just to make sure it doesn't turn off. One thing I noticed is there's something rolling around inside here. So there's just a whole bunch of lines instead of just being one solid picture. So that's definitely a problem. This projector has not been opened before. The warranty seal is not broken. So it makes me wonder what might be going on inside. I feel like maybe this one was dropped or something and that's why something's rolling around in there. Should be interesting to see what it is. Okay, and now it's time to find out what is rolling around in here. There we go. This little screw right here, it screws into the board right there. That's interesting. That definitely wouldn't have happened from a drop or anything. Just, uh, I don't know, must have been from the factory since this hasn't been opened before. Now, after looking at this for a little bit, I did notice that there's a connector on the board from here that goes down to this board down here that connects these two boards together. This is like, uh, has to do with the display and this is obviously the main board. So what I'm wondering is, especially with that screw missing, I wonder if this connection has just kind of come loose in there. So I think what I'm gonna do is remove this screw and pop this up a little bit and then push it all the way back down and screw both of these back in. And then let's test it again and see if that simple of a fix is what the problem is. So the other thing is this screw is not even on there tightly. I just started unscrewing it and noticed it wasn't tight at all. It's barely even seated. Okay, there we go. We have it disconnected and I'm gonna push it all back down. Nice and hard. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna slip the top cover back on and then we'll try it. Okay, all back together. Let's give it a try. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, the vertical lines are completely gone. The screw that was rolling around inside has now been put back in place. So number three is all fixed. This specific projector sells for $550 on eBay, which is a lot more than the 350 of the previous two, but the next one is worth even more. Let's move on to number four. Number four is an Optima UHD 38. This retails for $1,400 new and sells for 900 used on eBay. So the first thing we're gonna do is just plug it in and see what it does. And we got the red power light. Good news so far. The uh, focus ring just kind of comes off, or the zoom ring. And we do have some light coming out of it right now. And we are getting a normal light out of this one. So I've had this one on for a few minutes and I can't get anything to act up. It seems to work perfectly. The only thing that I notice on this one is this uh, zoom ring just is just loose in there. I'm pretty sure that's not how it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna take this top cover off and let's have a look at that. See if we can figure out how to secure that. I don't see anything broken on this. I also don't see anything that connects to anything. So on this, we have these little, uh, I don't know what they're called, little clips right here that can clip around these, but that only works for when you're twisting one way. When you twist the other way, those will just come loose. So if we go and zoom all the way back down here, we can get it to clip on and then it's nice and solid, but, oh, wait a second. Oh, that actually works pretty good now. That was a pretty easy fix for this projector. And this one, like I said, goes used for $900. So, I mean, I'll totally take it, especially when some of the other fixes took quite a while. But so far we are four for four on these projectors. Let's move on to number five and see if we can fix that one. And number five is the same model as number four with the same problem with the zoom ring. Let's turn it on and see if there are any other problems. Okay, it's turning on. Hear a bit of a buzzing sound. Not sure what that means. We do have a light though. And this one does have a display. 
So I've had this going for almost seven minutes with absolutely no issues so far. I'm going to turn it off and we'll take a look at this uh, zoom ring and see if we can get that fixed. Okay, and here we go. So how I did it before is the lettering right here was over to this side, how it is right now. Just kind of drop it down on there, turn it till it stops turning, and there we go. Well, that was an easy $900. Let's move on to number six. For number six, we have the Optima UHD 50X. It retails for $1,600, and the used price on eBay for something like this is $1,000. The first thing I notice on this is we have more smoke damage. So I'm gonna get this thing all taken apart so we can clean it. But first, let's turn it on and see if it even works. Okay, and we got the red light, that's good. Now blinking blue light. That is very loud buzzing. But it is working so far, and there we go. I do want to investigate and see if we can figure out where that buzzing's coming from. And it's been on for a little while with no problems found so far. So I'm going to get it disassembled and then start cleaning. Also, I want to take a look and see if we can figure out any of that buzzing noise. Hopefully that's re related to the smoke damage, but if not, maybe there's something else inside causing it that we'll see when we have it open. So we've got a lot of smoke damage over here at the exhaust port for the air, but there's also some other smoke damage throughout the rest of the case. So I'm going to get this cleaned up. And there's also quite a bit down in here and even some on the fan. So I'm also gonna get that cleaned up. I'm not gonna show very much of this because you've already seen me clean it, but I will show you the result once I'm done. Now, one of the things I also did notice when I had it on is there was like kind of like speckles up on the screen of very bright spots. And I think I found the source of that. This lens is just super dirty. So I'm just gonna use some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip to clean that off. Okay, and that's much better. I got a little more cleaning to do, but that's a lot better. Now I'm gonna move on to cleaning all the smoke out of the rest of it. Then we'll turn it back on and see how it works. I don't necessarily think that buzzing noise is coming from the fan, but the fan blades are pretty dirty. So I do wanna clean them while I'm in here. Now it is interesting, this being the most expensive projector here, this one has a much bigger board and it also has a cooling pad right here on the bottom of this plate. So you can tell just by looking at the pieces inside, this one is definitely built a little more robustly than some of the others. Now this one definitely didn't come out as clean as the other one, so we would probably take a little bit of a hit on the used price on eBay just because of the smoke damage, but mostly from the outside, it doesn't look too bad. I was able to clean the majority of the smoke residue off, but there's definitely quite a bit of stained plastic here. Now let's get it plugged in and start it up and see what happens. All right, and here we go. We got the red light on the power button. Definitely still have a buzzing noise. Okay, and there we go. So there we have it. Number six looks better. It smells better. Unfortunately, the buzzing noise is still there for sure, but it is fully working. I'm not sure, maybe all of these buzz. I'm not sure about the buzzing noise, but it does seem to work and it seems to work really well. So I'm gonna call number six fixed which means we've fixed all six of these projectors and we have a potential profit on these of about $4,000. Now that doesn't include eBay or shipping fees, so that will definitely cut into that quite a bit. But overall, I'd say this video is a huge success. If you need to get a PCB manufactured, I highly recommend JLC PCB. I'll leave a link to them in the description. If you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I bought a bunch of broken monitors to see if I could fix those. I'll leave a link up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix those. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.